Hey YouTube, today we'll be going over how to set up speed fan in order to control your pump, fans, what have you, through your motherboard. So here we go, this is the BIOS screen of my P8Z68 motherboard. The first things you want to check in the BIOS is to make sure you allow uh, software control of your, your motherboard fan headers. So you want to go to monitor and then let's go ahead and look here alright so it looks like I can set my Q fan control enabled my CPU fan speed low limit is 600 this is arbitrary for my particular setup you can set it to whatever you want as long as this is enabled Chassis Q fan control is also enabled. This allows software control of your fans in your case and pump if you have a pump connected there, like my H220. Um, in order for this to work, you have to make sure that your pump and fans are connected to the right spot. So basically, how my computer is set up right now is I have a CPU fan header that's 4-pin and a CPU optional 4-pin header. Those two headers act as one. They're actually controlled by the same adjustment. So I have my splitter connected to my CPU header along with a pump and one of the Helix fans. My other Helix fan is connected to the CPU optional header. Now those are they're all controlled by the same adjustment however they report two different speeds if that makes sense so right now my splitter with my pump connected to the first um, position in the splitter is reporting the pumps actual speed the optional header connected to my CPU fan is reporting the fan speed so I can get the best of both worlds I get control of both the fans and the pump and also the speed readout of my fan and my pump separately so I can monitor to see which one's actually what and running at which what speeds so that's basically what you want to look out for um, and this is what you want to look out for in the BIOS this is different for every manufacturer obviously but basically you want to go to your uh, temperature tab or section CPU or PC health section and make sure that you enable fan or manual fan control, automatic control, however it's labeled. You'll, you might need to play around with this and adjust it, but this is what you want set up, at least what I have set up in my p 8 z 68 motherboard uh, EFI BIOS, if you will. Once you set these, go ahead and reboot it, and we'll go ahead and install the speed fan software, and we'll, I'll uh, cut this video now and resume with speedfan installed and set up. Alright, thanks. Now that you've installed speedfan, go ahead and open the software. First thing you want to do is actually check if your motherboard is capable of controlling it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to configure and we're going to go to advanced. you'll see a chip and a drop down menu go ahead and click it and you want to look for your onboard um, fan controller so for ASUS motherboards like mine the P8Z68 it's called the Nuvatin NCT6776F click on that and then under PWM mode you want to change all of these to manual depending on the motherboard you have and the chipset the uh, controller chipset, this may be named differently. You're going to have to kind of exper experiment, I'm sorry, and play around with the values. But for the Nuvatin, click on one and change the set to, to manual. By default, I believe these come in Smart Fan 4, which allows the BIOS to control it and not Speed Fan. Once you set all these to manual, remember to check Remember It for all of these values so it's going to save it and then click OK. 
now we're going to go out to we're going to go ahead and verify whether or not your speed fan is capable of controlling it. So you have all your devices plugged in. Mine are already labeled, but yours is going to be labeled like I think fan one or sys fan whatnot. Um, make sure this is unchecked, and then we're going to start playing with the values here to make to see if any of the fans respond. So I have my sys fan uh, adjustment here, and I'm going to use my up arrow on my keyboard to change it. So let's go ahead and start changing it. I don't know if you can see it clearly in the video due to the quality, but my gentle typhoons are increasing in speed. And I can also hear it audibly from my computer. Alright, so now we've verified that SpeedFan can control the speeds. Let's move on to the CPU header. This is where my H220 pump and my Helix fans are plugged into via the splitter. So I'm slowly increasing that. Now I can see my H220 pump value, which is the number at the top, is increasing. It's kind of hard to read the actual number, but you can see that the numbers are changing. And maxed out. And now my pump is running at around 3000 RPM. Aux value, I know this beforehand because I've tested it. It doesn't do anything. It's not controlling any of the headers. But I'm just going to put it at 100 anyway. Your motherboard may vary depending on what can be controlled. So you're going to have to determine that by plugging in fans, using these sliders or these adjustments to see whether or not they respond to your, your input. So now that we see that the fans are all changed, let's go ahead and just put them arbitrarily at 50. 50. As you can see, my fan speeds and my pump are going to slow down accordingly. So now my general typhoons are actually under 1000 RPM now. My H220 pump is still kind of hovering there, so let's go ahead and bring the CPU down a little more. 25. And now it's back at 1600 RPM where I normally had it. Alright, so now that you've actually confirmed that SpeedFan can actually control the pro control your fans and motherboard, let's go to back to configure. And then let's go ahead and take a look at your temperature tab, which is the first one that opens up. Now if you have your GPU in your loop, like I do in my 670, um, let's go ahead and click expand it and you can see there's checks boxes next to the sys and CPU um, devices which correlate to the devices here so basically I want my GPU check this check these two boxes if you want your fans to respond according to the GPU temperature which I do because it's in the loop if the GPU gets hot I want my pump and my fans to increase in speed to compensate. Alright, so here you set your desired temperatures. Desired is essentially what your maximum temperature you want your device to run at, or the temperature you want your fans to run at full speed. So mine is at 50, which is fairly low, but I obviously want to keep it as cool as possible, at least in my opinion, by having my fans and my pump running by full speed, at full speed by 50 degrees Celsius. Moving down, you can do the same for other devices. You can do it for your hard drives too, but it's, as you can see, I have nothing selected here. It's pointless because my hard drive is not my loop. Increasing the pump speed and my fans in response to hard drive temperatures won't do much for it. Moving on, I have my core temperatures here as reported by the actual CPU. And as you can see, I have everything, even the aux, which doesn't really matter in my case, but I have all of my fan speed adjustments correlated, correlating to or um, tied into my core temperatures. And each of these cores are set with a desired degree of 60 degrees Celsius. So whenever any of these re reach close to 60, my fans will start scaling up their speed. And these 
check the devices will affect these readings or these adjustments. So that's why you want to check anything you want your pumps and fans to respond to. You check this. You check the um, the check boxes for it. All right. I hope that's clear enough. Basically, this is where you associate the fan speeds with the temperatures you want in your system. All right. So moving on, we have the fans here. This merely shows the speeds, disables, and enables fan speed readings on this side of the program. As you can tell, I've renamed my fans to make it a little easier. You can do this by doing two slow clicks. So one, two, and you can see it's it gives me an editing box. I can edit the name of it to make it a little more clear. This is just for you and to make things a little easier to read. Double click will not work a fast double click so keep that in mind and you can see it's currently reading the temperatures here as well but there's no settings here you need to change moving on to the speeds tab uh, what you can do when you're testing this speed fan control is to determine what level of what minimum speed you want the fans or pump to run so as I did before when we were testing whether or not speed fan can, can control the speeds Find a value that that you think will work, that sounds good, it's quiet. Um, once you find the value in here, you can also set that minimum value in here. So say right now you can see my CPU is idling at idle temperatures. Um, my fan and pump is running at 25%. I found this to be the quietest percentage or adjustment in, in my particular setup it will vary, oh, it may probably vary depending on your setup. But I played around with the values here, found that the minimum values that offer the best sound and temperatures balance, I recorded that minimum value and made it my minimum value here. And as you can see my system fan is different. It's actually 50 because they're gentle typhoons and the voltage controlled so the percentage is actually different. So you'll have to do a little trial and error it's pretty much just determining what value fits best here and then setting it in the minimum value under the speeds tab. All right, and I want the fan maximum value to be 100%, obviously, because I want my fans and pump running at 100% should the temperature need require it. And then don't forget to also select automatically variated. This is going to allow speed fan to control the speeds. Alright, so moving on. Advanced fan control allows you to adjust the curves, but we're not going to go in that today. It still works fine for me, actually. I don't see a need for it from in particular. Alright, so in the options tab, let's go ahead and I check the start minimized box here. This allows me to have speed fan startup with windows automatically and also be minimized, so I don't have this main window pop up every time. Static icon just pretty much means that instead of a temperature readout like I have here in already in real temp, I just have a uh, or core temp, whatever that was. I don't remember. I was on my head. Instead of an icon with a number on it, I have speed fan just a static speed fan icon here because I don't. I already have a a temperature readout here. It's redundant. All right. So minimize on close. So in case you um, when you minimize it, you don't accidentally close the software or, or and whatnot. So it just goes right back to the taskbar in here as an icon and not it doesn't stay here. And then my delta value here, this basically changes the number by which fan speed controls your fans. Or whenever it changes your fan speed, it's gonna do it by increments of five. By default this is ten. I change it to five because with ten, it f it, it sounds like the the, um, the the speeds change quite like quite often, and using five allows you allows it to just a little bit more finely, and according to fan speed. So it's not jumping from sixty to fifty to seventy occasionally. It's going by sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five, etc. It's it's a small increment, and allows more finer tuning of the fan speeds by speed fan. 
So that's that, and I believe that is it in to at least get SpeedFan running. We can go over the more advanced features of SpeedFan in another video, but just to help you configure it, I hope this video provide, um, provided some helpful tips and directions. Give, if you have any questions, give, uh, write a comment in the video and I'll go ahead and respond to it. I will do maybe a more advanced video of SpeedFan configuration to include like automatic shutdown should one of the pumps or fans fail if that's something that you would like to do but this guide hopefully should get you running with speed fan um, controlling your fans automatically alright thanks for watching